Hey guys, Waterfaller41 here, and if you've been following me for a while, you know I've been teasing about a light bar bracket project that I've been working on with Shifts and Grind. So long story short, a couple months back, I was sitting in my driveway looking at the front of my truck thinking, hey, I could probably come up with better brackets than the brackets that I was using to mount that 20 inch light bar in here, and I bet you I could fit a 30 inch light bar. So I started measuring everything, and then actually a 30 inch light bar will fit perfectly inside this grill. So I got a hold of Ryan over at Shifts and Grin and I said, hey, if I could come up with some dimensions and, and some test brackets, send them over to you. Can you make them look better? Can you fabricate them and give us a usable product? And then, you know, by all means, let's try to get this out to the rest of the fit gen world. Well, a couple months later, here are our brackets. So these brackets are basically right angle brackets that require absolutely zero drilling, zero cutting, and they will bolt right up inside the lower portion of your fifth gen Ram truck. And what they'll do is give you the ability to mount a 30 inch light bar. So I had a 20 inch light bar using those rough country brackets, got rid of that. And now what I'm gonna be doing is using my shifts and grin bracket. So we got a bracket for the passenger side, bracket for the driver's side. He sends the hardware and everything out with you. Very turnkey from a brackets perspective. You just need to provide the light bar. So. As far as the light bar, I went with the 30 inch stage series light bar from Diode Dynamics. This is in the driving light pattern. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that I already have the SS3 Max pods here. These are also from Diode Dynamics and these are by far the best pods that I've ever used. So I figure if I'm gonna swap out to a larger light bar down here, I might as well go with something that I know is tried and true. And I really like the driving light pattern on those pods. So I went with the same exact pattern on this guy. So this is one of the, in the 30 inch light bar air arena, I guess for Dow Dynamics, the driving pattern gives you the most light output. And in my opinion, gives you one of the best light patterns. So you have spot, which is really hot in the middle. You have flood, which basically floods the whole light. And then the driving is kind of a combo of that, but it gives you a nice rectangle projection of light out in front of you. And from my perspective, that is one of the most usable light patterns. So like I said, you get the brackets from Shifts and Grin and some stickers and then you get the hardware the hardware here is to mount these guys up underneath the truck and then as far as the hardware for mounting your light bar to here just go ahead and use the hardware that came with your light bar with Dow dynamics they give you a whole bunch of hardware but in this application for these brackets i really only need screws and washers because basically when this guy mounts in the truck it's gonna mount like that so um, again, these are powder coated, they're welded, they're steel, they're not going to go anywhere. These things are, are durable, they're bulletproof, but figure for kicks, might as well show you my tests. So these are my prototype brackets. Um, these were what I used to size up what the light bar bracket should look like. And these are what I based my dimensions off of. So you can see, here's mine, raw metal, kind of boring looking, really shiny, rough cuts. Really all I was trying to do was ballpark where the three holes needed to be the holes amount to the truck and then the holes amount for the light bar. And then Ryan took it and made it much better. So he slotted the bracket, the bracket to truck mounts. And then he also slotted the light bar. So you have some, some adjustment and some ability to move the light bar around. So if you wanted to swap out, um, and go with a curved light bar versus a straight one, you could pull that curved light bar back towards the rear of the truck so you could fit it in that grill and fit much better. All right, so we're gonna dive in the install and in full transparency, I have not installed this yet, but it does take some finagling. It is a tight fit, but you can make it work. So I'm gonna dive underneath the truck and I'll show you where these brackets are gonna go and what my plan is. And then over the next hour here, I'm gonna try to figure out how to fit this guy in there. Beauty is I already have the wiring and everything run. If you wanna see how to do that, I'll drop a link to one of my other videos where I actually installed the 20 inch light bar, which is powered by my trigger or plus, but one thing to call out before I get far too ahead, far ahead of myself here, make sure that if you're gonna install this lower light bar bracket, any of them that are on the market, that you have the perforated mesh grill. Some of the limiteds and some of the other trucks come with a solid piece here. You gotta swap that out and I'll leave the part number to that grill that you need to this grill, but you basically want the one that is perforated so the light can shine through. If you get the other one, or if you had the other one on your truck, makes no sense to install a light bar because it's all solid one piece. You won't be able to see any of the light coming out. So let's get up underneath the truck, start looking at how these brackets are installed, where they go, and then what we're gonna do to try to fit this light bar in there. 
But what All right, so we are underneath the truck and I wanted to show you how these brackets ultimately get installed. So we have our passenger side bracket here, looking at the passenger side obviously. When you install the bracket, the bracket points towards the front of the truck because you want that light bar be, well, I guess in front of this brace here. So you're gonna look at these two holes here. There's a hole here and a hole right up there. And you can actually see what was left from when I had the rough country bracket on there. But basically there's an open hole here, open hole there. Our bracket with the supplied hardware is just gonna line up right with those two holes. And that's where it's gonna sit. And that's gonna push our 30 inch light bar right through the middle and give us the light output that we need through that grill. So like I said, it's got some movement you can make here kind of moving the light bar up and down and really side to side to really angle that exactly where you need it. And then the bar bracket itself is slotted so you can move it forward or back. So a couple things that I'm gonna do before we even get to installing the light bar is there's a brace here and there's also a brace here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those just to get everything out of the way. Then the other thing I'm gonna do is I have front sensors. So you can see one right here. I'm gonna unplug those and get the wires out of the way because the wires actually cross through here because I think what ultimately is gonna happen is I'm gonna have to slide the light bar up underneath here. Um, but I wanna get everything out of the way. That way I have plenty of room to play around with before I start cramming stuff in here. So I already have the wires run. Like I said, I covered that in another movie. It's a Deutsch connector. So that's a pretty common aftermarket light bar connector. Uh, the, the diode dynamics uses that same exact connector. So we're good to go on that front. So this will work right with my trigger. It'll be a plug and play once I can get this guy bolted in here. But First, let's, to, let's remove this 10 millimeter bolt here. Let's remove this Torx bit here. Same thing here, 10 millimeter and Torx, and start to install. All right, so you can see the light bar is in there. It's just kind of sitting finger tight right now. The brackets are installed. Uh, you'll see that I removed my front parking sensors. Again, the reason I did that is just because I wanted to get that wire out of the way. These wires are really thin. I didn't want that light bar to drop on that wire while I was installing it and then me ruin these. So I removed both the driver's side as well as the passenger side one and I just kind of tucked it out of the way. So as far as install, let's get some better light here. As far as the install process, you gotta be kind of tricky with this one. So first thing you wanna do is slip your 30 inch light bar up in behind the bracket or up in behind the grill where it's ultimately gonna live. Then you wanna go ahead and take the end screw for one side of your light bar bracket and attach the bracket to the light bar with that end screw. Then after that, you wanna do the same thing on this side. You don't wanna put these bolts in yet until you get the screw through the shifts and grin bracket into your light bar. That way you have the ability to move things around because you do need this thing to kind of bobble around a little bit to get room for your hand on there. So again, I'm using a single roll light bar. If you have a double roll light bar, it's gonna get a little bit trickier. So single roll might be the way to go. Just spend the money on a really good single roll and you'll be, you'll be in, all right spot there so after I did after I threaded the end screw for the light bar through the shifts and grin bracket into the light bar then I went back and I installed the bolts that came with the kit through the existing holes and through the shifts and grin bracket and right now they're just finger tight but they're holding everything in place so before I go and tighten everything down it is a very tight fit between the light bar let's see if you can see in there between the light bar and the grill itself so I'm gonna go ahead and, and pop these guys back into that lower grill so I don't need to mess around with those anymore. And then I'll slide this light bar where I want it. <clears throat> and then I'll just start tightening everything down. So I'm gonna tighten down the brackets first. So these two bolts here, and then these two bolts, and then I'll go back in and tighten down the light bar itself. The light bar is gonna be a little tricky. Um, I'm gonna end up having to use a uh, Allen wrench here because it is pretty close confines in there. I'm probably gonna have arthritis coming out of that one, but um, this is the only way you're gonna be able to get access there without removing the front of the grill. I don't see any other way to get access to the side of the light bar to tighten it down. So we're gonna use an Allen head. It's small enough, compact enough. It might take you know an eighth of a turn at a time to do it, but ultimately we'll get there. So again, just to review the process for installing that light bar, you're gonna take the whole light bar itself, pop it up inside the bracket there where it's gonna go. Then you're gonna thread one end screw through the shifts and grim bracket into the light bar. Don't put these in yet. You're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Sh take a screw and thread it between, through the shifts and grin bracket to the light bar. So then the light bar will be mounted to the brackets and then these are just kind of floating around. Then you go ahead and take your hardware that came with the shifts and grin kit, 
pop it through the existing holes. I'll take I take the bolts and run them through from the front of the truck to the back. That way I have the nuts in here so I can thread everything else on there. So I got a fender washer, a lock nut, or I'm sorry, a fender washer, a split washer, and then a uh, nut on the end of it. So we got four of those. So like I said, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and tighten these guys down on both sides and then install this guy. And then we will use our Allen wrench to tighten down the light bar. And then we'll take this guy for a drive and see what that light pattern looks like. All right, everything is installed. So let's talk about the installation process one more time. So again, first thing you're gonna do is remove these braces. So there's a 10 millimeter and then there's a Torx bit here, 10 millimeter Torx bit here, remove those. Then the next thing you wanna do is remove your front parking sensors if you have them. Uh, really, that's just a precaution just in case you drop your light bar. Then you're gonna take your 30 inch light bar, you're gonna slip it up underneath the brackets here, put it in place where it's ultimately gonna go, have the side screw ready to go because you're gonna thread a screw or thread one of the bolts for the light bar through the shift and grin light bar bracket into the side of the light bar. You're gonna do the same thing on this side. You're gonna basically just reach your hand around, thread a bolt through the bracket into the light bar so that you have the light bar attached to the brackets. Then you're gonna go ahead and take the hardware that came in the shift and grin kit and pop that from behind so the bolts are gonna go in this way. Bolt goes through here, put a fender washer in there, put a lock washer, and then put your bolt or your nut on, do the same thing there. Do the same thing over here. You don't need to tighten down the light bar yet. Tighten down these brackets and then check for clearance in your parking sensors. Make sure that your light bar is clearing the back, the wires in the back of those parking sensors. Remember you have some adjustability so you can push the light bar forward or pull it back depending on what you need. Then go ahead and use whatever tool you need. So in my case, I had to use an Allen head to tighten down the bolts that we originally threaded through the bracket into the light bar. Now in hindsight, one thing that I would highly recommend because it's a tight fit in there, it might be easier to get a ratcheting wrench in there. Um, so what I might do in the future is replace those Allen head screws with hex heads. That way I could get a hex head back here and tighten things down way better than I could with the Allen head. I was afraid I was gonna strip it. I didn't have much leverage on it, but ultimately everything's in and the light bar is tight. So now what I'm gonna do is go out on the road, find a dark area, and then I still have some ability to, to move the light bar up and down even though the side bolts are tight. Once I get it in a position where I want it, then I'll pull the truck back in the garage and tighten down those bolts one last time and then we're good to go. So then the wire, the one thing I like about diode dynamics light bars is they have really long whips on their light bars. So Unfortunately, this whip was super long, so it comes in from the passenger side of the light bar. I had to bring it all the way over here, loop it, so that I could plug into my existing harness without clipping any wires. But ultimately, everything is installed, so let's get out from underneath the truck and take a look at what it looks like from the front of the truck. All right, so we're out from underneath the truck. Let's take a look at the light bar, and boom, you could barely see it in there, which is awesome. It's nice and discreet, fits nicely in there with the light bar bracket being powder coated black. You don't see any of the bracket. You just get a glimpse of the lens on the light bar, but that is awesome. So 30 inch light bar using the shifts and grin bracket is installed on the fifth gen Ram. Super easy installation. Huge shout out to Ryan at shifts and grin for working with me to design the bracket. Again, I had this crazy idea. I thought about it, sent him the dimensions and he was the wild one to respond to my emails and answer me and actually run with it. So this is super awesome. Glad to see this thing come to life. Um, what started as cardboard templates turned into pretty sick looking brackets to fit a 30 inch light bar. So let's go and get this guy out on the road and take a look at what this light bar looks like once it's powered up. All right, so I have the truck fired up so I could take a look at what the light bar looks like on the wall. So right now just the DRLs are on. So let's take a look at that light and I'm using my, let's see, Trigger 4 Plus app. So this is my Bluetooth app that control my switches as well. So let's turn that lower light bar on. Boom, let there be light. Ah, oh, dang it, garage lights. Let's turn those off. On, off, on, off. And I know the white balance is really crazy, but let's do lower light bar and ditch lights. Look at the coverage, awesome. Ex awesome display of that driving pattern too. So like I said, that is a rectangle light. And to me, the farther out that rectangle light gets, the more it's gonna cover and give you a nice clean usable coverage from the light. So, all right, well, let's get this bad boy out on the road and take a look at what this looks like on dark roads instead of just against my garage wall. Off, on, and for kicks, let's try out the strobe. 
Boom. Awesome. That's a cool feature from the Trigger 4 A plus or Trigger 4 Plus is on here. Let's see. That little switch, that toggle switch with the lightning bolt that can turn it on to strobe mode. So if you were so inclined and there was somebody veering in and out of their lane in front of you, or they were really slow in a lane, you can blast them with that guy for a second and they may or may not move out of the way. All right, so let's go ahead and get this guy out on the road and take a look at what it looks like on dark roads. All right, so I'm gonna apologize. The weather's not really cooperating with us, but the show must go on. So I promised you all I'd show you what the light bar looks like once it's illuminated and once I had some time to get out uh, when it's dark outside. So unfortunately, the only time I can get out is when it's raining. So we're gonna go ahead and use our trigger four here to turn everything on and see what that light pattern looks like. So let's go ahead and hit that lower light bar. And I don't have my headlights on, just DRLs. So that's how far that thing shines. And those red signs down there are about 200 yards away. So man, this thing throws some light. At 30 inches, that's a, that's a quality spread for a light bar that's that low on the truck. So it washes everything nicely. So let's turn on the, uh, the, hitch, the, the ditch lights too and see how those light up everything on the sides. Boom, those throw light just as far. So off, on. This is a thousand times better than the 20 inch light bar that I had on there. Uh, a, it's a better quality light bar. And B, obviously the bigger light bar with a better light pattern is gonna give me a better, more usable light coverage on the front of the truck. But if you want any more pictures of the light bar and the coverage and everything, I've been sharing a bunch on my Instagram. So by all means, hit up uh, over there and check out some of them pictures. If not, shoot me an email and I'll gladly send you some additional pictures in case you're still on the fence about buying this. But the 30 inch shift Singren light bar brackets with the 30 inch Dow Dynamics, it's a winning combo. But with that said, thank you very much for watching. <laughs>